Welcome to the round of Russia, the second of three over capacity events this season. With 136 cars attempting to qualify for this race, only 42 could qualify. So let's take you to the starting grid and show you who has qualified for this race, starting with Grigory Novakovsky, who won the pole with Isaac Kowalczyk along his outside, Jan Schmidt, Christopher Loxen, and Sweep Row 2 for Alters Kessler GP, Clara Kindall, the Europe points leader and Leonid Chernov in row three, Ben Atkins, your first series regular in row four with Lev Zarepin, Johan Sigurdsson and Clay Gibson in row five, uh, David Hetzel comes back to the PCC Cup Series with Katjen Skrull on his outside, Pyotr Lyovkin and Ingrid Hadeland making a case for themselves in row seven, Marcelo Bakelli and Tussie Antonin in row eight, Les Jackson, uh, the fourth driver for Johnson Racing, and Lev Tabakov in row 9, Anders Magnussen and Derek Scheiter, who we lost at Mansfield, in row 10, Stuart Buchanan and Mahali Balish in row 11, Ian Elias and Alexa Lake, row 12, excellent qualifying effort for Alexa Lake, and Donnie Olsen is back in row 13. As we go through the rest of the grid, you'll notice that there's quite a few of your normal drivers running the full schedule at the back of the grid, this is because the Europe drivers came out in full force here today and uh, swept the first 12 rows seemingly as we've got into provisional land. Ike Durbin, who took the PCC Cup provisional, JP Beaufort took the Europe provisional, and uh, we had a few driver swaps for those who qualified. Uh, they gave up their rides to their teammates who were unable to make the race. And with that, Novakovsky and Kovalchuk bring the field down, and they're going to take the green flag here at the Vinukovo Airport to get this race underway. Novakovsky and Kovalchuk stay side by side through the first couple turns. Still battling hard is Kovalchuk on the outside. Novakovsky has a preferred line, but that means that, uh, oh, he hits the curb there a bit. They almost collide, and Kovalchuk has the advantage coming into this uh, sharp left-hander. Uh, Novakovsky is going to run a bit wide and Kovalchuk is going to take the lead as they go single file through most of the field and by the end of lap one Kovalchuk has a pretty decent lead already built up over the rest of the field. The pole who has driven for Rus Autosport for several years now looking to have an X performance here. Uh, he has not had the best of luck in the PCC Europe points and he's looking to make up some of that ground. Gaspar D'Souza, who's in the 72, qualified by Kyle McWall, bounces off the wall, bounces off Barry Juvenal, comes across the track, runs into Greg Woodard. The steering must have broken because he hits the inside wall and goes out of the race immediately. Uh, that lasted all of two laps, and uh, Gaspar D'Souza will be the first retiree from this event. Uh, just a couple laps in, going on board with Greg Woodard, uh, something must have happened to the steering because that car was all over the place on that straightaway, and uh, Gaspar D'Souza is a much better driver to have uh, done that without, uh, to have uh, caused that incident without getting any damage. Uh, here's Clara Kindle, who is a PCC Europe leader. This is a PCC Cup and Europe combination event, so points will be scored for both series in this race, and Kindall is in the fourth Manicore Engineering car, the nine car. She is in sixth place and is the top driver who's not a Rus Autosport or Altruist Gessler GP driver. So she's doing a great job here today. And so is Ben Atkins, who is the first series regular in seventh place, running right behind Kindall there. And uh, Atkins has had a resurgence through the field uh, in the past few weeks. After uh, Talladega, he was last in points, and now he's back up in the top 10. So Atkins is making a mid-season charge for the championship and uh, I'd argue that he's one of the favorites uh, to win it now. Barry Juveno, who has qualified for another special event this season, has dropped to last place of the car's running. Uh, Juveno has not shown much pace, but has still shown that he's capable of qualifying for these special events. Uh, Juveno's seat, uh, to say it's hot, is an understatement. Uh, Stefan's Racing might not even be in the Cup Series next year with the new promotion relegation mechanic that's been added to the championship. Uh, but we wish him the best, and uh, hopefully he can perform a decent showing here uh, to get the attention of some teams that might want to pick him up. Uh, Ike Durbin has made some ground, and he gets pinched by Joe Craig into the wall, and they're both going to go spinning out. Uh, not a lot of damage done to both cars, but I'm sure that's frustrating for Ike Durbin, who got the champion's provisional, or championship leader provisional, to get into this race. And they're both going to fall behind Barry Juveno, who uh, I think they'll have no problem catching here. But the championship leader has an early setback, 
Uh, gonna go on board and see what happened. He was uh, running his line and uh, yeah, Joe Craig just pulled over on him and uh, took them both into the wall. So uh, not sure if Craig has a spotter down there uh, in that section of the track, but that was a pretty idiotic move uh, by Joe Craig. Uh, here's Zane Cordola, who is a driver from Pennsylvania who decided for some reason to make his first start here in the round of Russia. There was some controversy surrounding this car in pole qualifying. Uh, they did not uh, have a proper setup in the car and they shanked their pole qualifying lap uh, so that they could get into tier four. Uh, then they uh, managed to get the right setup in the car and uh, proceeded to dominate that race, uh, securing his spot in the field. So some controversy surrounding uh, this 555 car, but he is currently in 29th place so it's not really mattering that much in the race. Les Jackson is running up in the top 20, having a pretty decent showing for the uh, one Johnson racing car that managed to qualify. And he's going to lose the brakes, headed into this turn and slide it into the wall. And uh, in the process of trying to get it going, he's going to stall that car and lose four laps in the process. Uh, going on board with Anders Magnussen to see what he saw, uh, running in 17th place. And uh, looks like Jackson just looped it under braking. Uh, or lack of braking, I should say. James Hewitt is the best of the substitute drivers right now in this 1555 car. He's trying to make a pass on Kelly Blackwater for 31st place, and they're going to get together, and Hewitt's going to go hard into the wall, and that's going to be the end of Hewitt's race. Uh, so both the championship contenders in the Cup Series uh, that are in this race, actually all three of them, have befallen early troubles. And that's going to be the end of the day for Hewitt, who... Uh, I think was expecting quite a bit more from this race. We're gonna go on Belford with Kelly Blackwater uh, to see what exactly happened here. Uh, yeah, they just kind of were fighting over the same real estate. And uh, Kelly Blackwater, who uh, honestly I'm surprised she qualified for this, uh, is continuing to show uh, her talents, I guess you could say. Here is uh, Andres Baumgartner, who surprisingly qualified for this race with his family team. Uh, we really didn't expect this car to make it. We kind of wrote him off as uh, an instant DNQ, but uh, he ran extremely well in his uh, Tier 4 qualifying effort as uh, JP Beaufort goes by him there and managed to put his car in the race. So some speed that we haven't really seen from Baumgartner, and uh, he's doing an excellent job out here. We uh, hope that he continues to show up in these series and Back up at the front of the field, Isaac Kovalchuk has put a pretty decent gap on Grigory Novakovsky, but the top six are all PCC Europe drivers, and the top five are all PCC Europe cars, which honestly is not a good look for the PCC Cup regulars, who uh, haven't really been able to mount a serious challenge to dethrone these top six drivers all week, as they've topped the practice qualifying and now race sessions uh, throughout this event. Here's Johan Sigurdsson, who's doing a fantastic job up in 10th place, driving for his family team. Uh, he is the first Icelandic driver to run a PCC Cup race, and uh, his family team purchased this car from Scuderia Forza, who field the 42 and 43. He is currently receiving technical assistance from that team, and has done an excellent job on speed. He's been up in the top 15 or 20 on all combined uh, sessions through pack practice and qualifying as has Clay Gibson, who's running right in front of him in the 52 car. Kelly Blackwater is starting to fall back a bit. Uh, she just let Sam Garrow go by in the 05 there. And uh, Manfred Haas is going to take a peek on the inside. They're going to make uh, contact, and they go hard into the opening. Both cars are going to get airborne. That's a big wreck as Haas goes flipping into the outside wall. That's your championship points leader, Ike Durbin, involved. Barry Juveno is going to pile in as well, going on board with Durbin. And that was just a massive incident. Uh, both drivers were transported to a local hospital for further observation. We have no word on either medical condition of Blackwater or Haas, but that was an absolutely massive incident. Uh, no driver has hit that opening yet in all the races that we've run here, and uh, that's going to change as Joe Craig makes a pretty good maneuver to get through that wreck. But on a lighter note, Les Jackson's going to come out of the pits four laps down. They managed to change the brakes on that 91 car, and he's going to get going again. And uh, pull right in front of Clara Kindall there, which might cause some traffic issues uh, later on. Here's Sapphire Anderson, who swapped into the 63, normally driven by John Brocky. Anderson, one of the promising rookies in the series. Her normal car 
the V car, is actually the one that uh, John Brocky left when he went to form this team, so an unlikely alliance between the two after they've already split once. Uh, at Sapphire Anderson currently runs in 30th position. Lev Tabakov running in 16th brings his car into the pits for a cut tire. Uh, he is the only SMP Team Katsov car that managed to qualify for this race, as uh, before this, uh, they hadn't managed to put less than two cars into a PCC Europe race. They've had some decent success over in that series, with a few top 10s from Alexei Lyutov and a couple of their other drivers, but Tabakov has not been uh, the highest performing driver at that team, so it was a bit of a surprise that he managed to put his car into the race. JP Beaufort runs in 7th, is 7th uh, in PCC Europe points, and uh, managed to get the provisional for this race, which was a bit of a surprise even to himself. And he started in 37th and has worked his way up about uh, 12 positions from that point. He's caught this pack that has Olsen, the Burtz, Smith, and Cordola in it. And uh, he's been slicing his way through the field. Speaking of Cordola, his engine is going to grenade uh, and end his race prematurely. There's a bit of controversy with him qualifying. Uh, but it's not really going to matter because he's going to drop out early and uh, not, unfortunately not really get the finish that he deserved uh, coming into this race. As Les Jackson has started to form a bit of a, uh, a train behind him, uh, Ben Atkins, Lev Zerapin, uh, Gibson, and Sigurdsson are back there. Uh, Jackson is just fast enough that the drivers behind him haven't been able to make any moves to pass him. Uh, but he's just slow enough that he started to stack up the field a little bit behind him. And I understand that's a bit furious uh, for some of the drivers. It, it's infuriating for the drivers behind him uh, who can't really make the moves. Here's Stuart Buchanan coming out of the pits. He pit from the top 20. And uh, regular Europe competitor for the past couple of years, he has not really had the success that he's been hoping for. But he always seems to find his way into the points. Uh, so he has performed decently in that series. Perry Juvenal now, lap 14, is going to go his first lap down, as uh, he is the first non-damaged car to get lapped here, as uh, he's really holding up Kovalchuk for some reason. And, oh, I don't think you want to block the leader like that, Juveno. That, oh, that's a bit rough. But he's going to let him go by, and uh, Juveno is the first car to go a lap down. He's really struggled here today. Uh, but at least he made the race, as now here is Loxon, who has reported that he has dropped a cylinder. You can see just how much straight line speed he's lost here to uh, Leonid Chernov, who currently runs uh, now fourth. But he had lost touch with the top four before uh, Loxanen had his issues. Uh, but Loxanen's lap times have dropped off by about three seconds a lap. So I'd imagine that he's going to fall into the clutches of the rest of the field sooner than later as uh, he just soldiers on with that engine problem. There's not really much that they can do with that car, aside from keep him out and hope that uh, it doesn't blow up on him, as, oh, Juvenal continues to block, and now that's uh, Jan Schmidt in the 27 that he's going to throw a block on. And uh, Barry Juvenal is, uh, at, at this point, he's just being an annoying backmarker. Uh, I'm honestly surprised that he hasn't been dumped into the wall yet, but he is still out there, he is still earning points, and uh, he is running for a championship even though he's uh, 41st in points, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he should have gotten a setup from Donny Olsen, his teammate, who is making his first start in seven years uh, in the 42 car. This is uh, the fourth Stefan's racing car, which he managed to put in the field. He got sponsorship from John Jefferson, who failed to qualify, and... Uh, the 2006 Rookie of the Year finished third in the championship that year. Uh, has a number of wins over on the ovals in uh, America. Managed to fall out of the series after 2010, but Stefan's Racing picked him up as a driver coach and given him a second chance here today. And he's doing a pretty good job running up in the mid-20s right now. And so is Sam Smith, who we haven't seen in a couple years in the Cup Series. He's been running in the Lights and Truck Series on and off. He managed to secure this sponsorship deal with Gripall and uh, he's been able to fund a few rides here and there. Uh, but he's primarily become a road course ringer. He ran in the series full time from 2003 until uh, 2011 uh, when he left to go run in Australia for a year with uh, 
mixed success over there, but now he's back as a road course ringer, and he's doing a decent job so far in 24th place. Here's Clara Kendall, who has managed to catch and pass uh, Christopher Loxanen, so that just tells you what kind of problems that the one car is having, as uh, Kendall is now starting to catch Barry Juvenal to put him a lap down, and uh, hopefully he goes a bit easier on uh, her than the rest of the field, as Greg Woodard now is getting ready to go a lap down. He is in the 96, which Dan Ferrey qualified, uh, swapped his way into the field since he's higher in points. Uh, actually, I believe he's lower in points than Dan Ferrey, so this is just an effort to uh, make up some ground in the series uh, in points, as it uh, looks like Giles Treadway is getting ready to go a lap down too. He's kind of been all over the place, as uh, Greg Woodard uh, trying to be a decent back marker, but unfortunately that's not gonna work out for him as he's going to get turned by uh, Novakovsky there, and he's going to hit the uh, wall on the inside of the hairpin and slide out of the way. So uh, clearly these uh, Europe regulars are not too fond of back markers, as uh, Woodard found out the hard way. So he's going to give uh, the 61 quite a bit of room there, as Derek Scheiter, uh, who was running up in the top 20, has encountered some serious mechanical issues. Uh, he is way off the pace, as you can see there as uh, Balish and uh, Lake have caught him with no problem. Last time we saw Shaitera in the Cup Series was at Mansfield, where he made his first start. Uh, he's been running uh, in the Europe Series mostly as a part-time entrant. As uh, oh, what a teammate! He just let uh, he just hold up, held up Balish so Lake could go by. Uh, both of them are Master Sport affiliated drivers. Uh, Lake normally drives for Master Sport in the Europe Series, but she currently is the fourth res and reserve driver for uh, the Matthews Motorsports team, as uh, Shaiter continues to hold up Balish. Another driver having mechanical issues suddenly is Tussi Antonin in the 67, who's driving for uh, Autosport Giannunzio. Uh, one of four cars who attempted this race, he is the only one who qualified, and... Uh, He's had some flashes of brilliance. He won the pole, or at least uh, won one of the qualifying rounds in the round of Italy, and has had a few top 10 finishes here and there in the Europe series, but uh, running up in the top 15, and unfortunately his car has dropped off the pace now too. Uh, so I'd imagine that they're gonna bring him into the pits at, just as Derek Scheiter's team did. They were tired of running about six seconds off the pace. As it turns out, a tire was delaminating on that car and uh, they'd get that changed and send him back out. Uh, Christopher Loxenden has formed an absolutely massive train behind him, uh, merging his with uh, Les Jackson's, as it looks like Ben Atkins managed to get around, and there's Barry Juvenal, so this is going to get ugly really fast, as uh, we've got fast cars, we've got slow cars, we've got cars going a lap down, we've got uh, cars trying to hold off uh, cars for position, as Greg Woodard and Lev Tabakov are battling for 20th place, and Woodard's gonna get dumped by Tabakov, and uh, that's going to put him into the wall. Woodard will continue on, I believe, although that car does is looking pretty slow. Uh, he is reporting some suspension damage on that car, so I think that is going to be the end of the day for Greg Woodard as he swapped into that car. Loxanen's found himself in a hairy situation. They're trying to go three wide. Jackson pushes him off into the grass, and uh, he's going to hang on the inside. Uh, get around Jackson again, and oh dear, that's uh, that's one heck of a train behind him as Jackson's going to try and make another move to get around him, and I think he, nope, uh, Loxton's going to keep him behind, as uh, this is going to end up very hairy, as now we've got drivers all the way back to Magnuson in this group, and uh, the crew finally decide that they've had enough with this, and uh, they're going to bring Loxton into the pits as now he is reporting that there is a fuel leak in the car, and uh, that's not good. They're going to see if they can patch that up and send him back out on track, and uh, figure out what's causing him to see if they can't repair that uh, cylinder at all. I doubt that, though. Here's Giles Treadway, who's uh, about to go a lap down, and Tussie Antonin just came out of the pits, and he's running with Stuart Buchanan as well. All three of these are for position. And they're going to pinch each other into the wall. And that's Clara Kendall in there with them. Oops. Uh, maybe you should be a bit more uh, conscientious of uh, the lead lap cars around you. Uh, 248 car. 
because uh, that could have been a disaster for a driver who's running up in the top three. You can go on board with uh, Kindle here and see that, yeah, uh, Treadway just pinched over into the nine car, just not realizing that she was there. Uh, a bit of a boneheaded move from the 248, if I do say so myself, as Barry Juveno now has fallen into this, uh, oh dear, we're three wide between uh, Zerapin, uh, Jackson, and uh, Juveno, and this might end uh, as a mess. Oh, Juveno backs out and lets them go by. That's probably the smartest thing he's done all day, as uh, looks like he's starting to let some of the lap, or some of the lead lapped cars go by, as, uh, yeah, he's letting Gibson go by. Uh, he's going to let uh, Sigurdsson go by here as he's managed to find himself in a lane and he decided to be a, a courteous back marker for once, although Koch and Skrull doesn't think so. They're going to get together and Skrull's going to take him into the wall and collect uh, Dave Hetzel there. And that's going to take uh, Juveno out of the race. Uh, something I've said way too many times this year. As uh, Loxanen has is about to go a lap down, he, I don't think he realizes that, that, that that's the leader. He's going to get uh, turned and go into the hairpin. And that's going to be the end of the day for the one car who has had plenty of issues. And uh, that fuel line that they had repaired on pit road ruptured once again. And uh, that car is going to slow and uh, drop out of the race. Says, oh, that's your teammate. Maybe you should get out of the way. Uh, Loxanen, what are you doing? That was... Uh, do you not have a spotter down there? You were not clear as Treadway uh, exacts his revenge on Zerapin for some reason. I guess there was some contact that we missed between the two of them prior, uh, but that was, uh, Zerapin was putting Treadway a lap down, so I'm not sure why he did that. And uh, the officials kind of want to talk to him as well about that as Treadway has been wrecking some of the leaders. Uh, Tussie Antonin's problems have gotten a lot worse, and uh, unfortunately this looks like it's a terminal issue as he's uh, way, way, way off the pace. Uh, he's not even going to make it to Pit Road as he stops his car on uh, Pit Road entrance as Shaitera just misses him. But it looks like we've had an incident further up as uh, going on board with Dave Hetzel. Hetzel is going to commit to the pit lane, realizes too late, and oops. Uh, Hetzel would go out of the race after running into the pit wall, uh, and Sam Garreau would drop out due to fuel injection issues uh, on the same lap. Uh, Sam Garreau had been running near the back of the field and was never really a factor uh, to do much all race. As uh, Now we've got green flag pit stops starting off as uh, Isaac Kovalchuk brings his car into the pits from the lead on uh, lap 24. Uh, this is a little early. He's going to have to stretch it if he's going to make it the rest of the way, as this is a 50-lap race. Uh, but he should be fine, as now Grigory Novakovsky, who had been running in second place, is going to take over the point, uh, getting ready to lap Joe Craig, as uh, looks like that's Leonid Chernov also bringing his car into the pits from fourth place. As a uh, pretty long stop for uh, Isaac Kovalchuk, as he had to repair some right-side damage. He's going to get that car back out on track, and uh, Derek Scheiter there is uh, going to try and get around him. But uh, Kovalchuk uh, going to have to wait and see how the other drivers pan out on pit road to see if this is going to make a difference or not. Andrus Baumgartner battling with Stuart Buchanan for position is going to get turned into the wall. That's unfortunate for him. He was having such a good run, but fortunately he would keep that car going and uh, wouldn't have to even pit for the damage. Now here's a few drivers who we haven't talked about all day. Marcelo Bacchelli in the 53, Ingrid Hadland in the 20, and uh, right behind is Anders Magnussen in the 33. All three of these are, all three of these drivers are in the top 10, uh, running seventh, eighth, and ninth. As uh, Bacchelli, we've only seen once before. He was so slow in his one uh, Europe attempt that he DNQ'd by about six seconds, but the team managed to uh, get their act together and. They're putting together a fantastic run here. Hadland is doing an excellent job running up in the top 10, uh, making a case for being full-time in the series once again. And Anders Magnussen, we've seen him poking around in the series since about 2011, and uh, he's doing a great job uh, running up in the top 10 in his own equipment. Alexa Lake is also doing a great job. Uh, she's running up in uh, running up in 11th place right now. She just passed... Uh, 
Kovalchuk for that position, as uh, Kovalchuk's tires haven't warmed up enough. Uh, but Alexa Lake, uh, normally she's running in the mid-30s in uh, Europe races, but now she's up in the top 10 once you add some of the regulars in. So uh, clearly, uh, despite her experience in uh, the Europe series uh, compared to the regulars being just average, uh, she's actually much better on these road courses than a lot of the regulars in the series. Uh, so Alexa Lake doing a great job here today. Didn't really expect to see this at all. As uh, we've got some lap traffic here as Sapphire Anderson pulls across the nose of, uh, that was Novakovsky, the leader. As, uh, oh dear, we've got some contact now between Skrull and Smith, and Skrull's gonna get turned into the wall, and that's the leader going out of the race. As Novakovsky is done from the lead. What was, what was that about? As, uh, Anderson, I guess, just wasn't clear. That, that didn't do a lot of damage, but, uh, Katya and Skrull, I guess, uh, and Sam Smith had a dispute there, and wow, 23 rocketed across the track right in front of the 66, and he had nowhere to go. He had no time to react. Going to go on board with Sam Smith. Uh, Skrull had taken some damage prior to this and uh, was off the pace just a bit. Uh, Smith tried to follow Olsen through, and guess he thought that Skrull had run him a bit wide under the rumble strips and decided to take some revenge on that, and that's going to take uh, Skrull out of the race, too. Smith would continue on, and uh, the officials would want to have a word with Smith as Alexa Lake gets turned by our teammate, who I guess uh, they weren't cleared there, uh, pseudo-teammate. And Alexa Lake, unfortunately, is going to go out of the race after such a strong run early on. Uh, just a miscommunication between those teams, their technical partners, uh, Master Sword, and Marcelo Bacelli runs into Lake. That's going to do a lot of rear end damage to that 53 car, but he's going to get that car point in the right direction and uh, get that taken care of as uh, Jan Schmidt, who has now inherited the lead, brings his car into the pits on lap 29 of 50, so he is good to go on fuel for the rest of the way. It's a bit iffy for uh, Kovalchuk, but Atkins and Sigurdsson follow suit, and there's uh, Magnuson right behind. And uh, these cars are all looking for good finishes here today. Coming out of the pits, it looks like uh, Schmidt managed to win that battle over uh, Kovalchuk, as Kovalchuk is 20 seconds back from Schmidt, so either uh, Kovalchuk's going to have to really close this gap, which I think he might be able to do at least a little bit, as Kovalchuk's tires are now warmer than Schmidt's. Uh, so I'd expect to see that gap close just a bit. Here's Mahali Balish running the 73 car. He's a back marker in the PCC Europe series normally. Uh, normally he fails to qualify and is in the consolation races that they have. But here, uh, he is running up in 12th place. He's managed to survive a lot of the attrition. Uh, this is the same 73 team, if I'm not mistaken, that a... Uh, Austin Terry ran at uh, at Mansfield, if I'm not mistaken. So this team running both in Europe and in the States doing a pretty decent job. Ben Atkins uh, has moved up to third place now and uh, is running right behind Sapphire Anderson, who is still going after that uh, little incident that she had with the leader. Uh, and Derek Scheiter is still on pace. Uh, but Ben Atkins running in third place, Sigurdsson, and I believe that's uh, Leovkin are in uh, fourth and fifth. And now uh, Magnuson running sixth all by himself. But Kelly, uh, Gibson, looks like uh, that's uh, Hadeland, one of the Rus Autosport cars, and uh, Kindall are running uh, seventh through eleventh as we're going on board here with the leader as we've got some lapped cars right in front. Oh, that's a code brown as uh, Stuart Buchanan just turned Barbara Burt in front of the leader. That was for position. Uh, but Jan Schmidt, I can't imagine, is too thrilled to see that happening right in front of him as uh, Clara Kindall made an unscheduled pit stop to, uh, to uh, reattach a loose wheel. And uh, that's going to drop her down in the running order. She will still be on the lead lap, but that drops her down outside the fi top 15 right now, which is a tough break for her. As Ingrid Hadeland now doing battle with uh, 
I believe that's uh, Leonid Chernov. And uh, fantastic run here for Hadaland, who, again, I've mentioned this several times before, is making a case for going full-time in this series once again. She had a shot in 2014 with the Williams Racing Team, uh, but that team, their funding fizzled out uh, at the end of that season, and she was unable to maintain a drive. But here she is with Matthews Motorsports team, running a part-time schedule, doing a great job, as that's Sam Smith getting turned by one of the Russian Bears cars, and he's going to go back into the wall in the hairpin, and that's going to take Smith out of the race. I suppose it is karmic retribution for causing the accident that wrecked Novakovsky out from the lead. But you can't help but feel for Sam Smith, who uh, doesn't get too many opportunities like this. Speaking of uh, drivers not getting opportunities, Donnie Olsen just went a lap down for the first time. He's up in the top 15 now in this 45 car, which nobody expected to qualify. And uh, he's outrunning JP Beaufort right now. Uh, first start in seven years, and I suppose that this is opening the eyes to uh, some of the teams that thought that he was just a wash-up has-been who managed to get a ride just based on uh, connections to old teams. And uh, Donnie Olsen just putting on an excellent show here uh, in the later stages of this race. Sapphire Anderson gonna get turned by Lev Tabakov and she's gonna catch the hairpin opening slide across the track and go out of the race in front of a bunch of cars that are up on the top 10. I uh, guess they're not too thrilled about that, but Anderson a strong run is going to go flat uh, late in the going as Marcelo Bacelli and Clee Gibson just up the road battling for a top 10 position. They're going to make contact and they're going to take each other hard into the wall. They're going to take both of those cars out of the race. Unfortunate for them, it looked like it was just a misjudged maneuver by Bacelli. You see he gets into the right rear quarter panel of Gibson and takes them both into the wall hard. Uh, both drivers would be okay after that wreck, although Gibson looked a bit shaken up as uh, lap 37 and the lead is down to just about six seconds or so. So uh, Kovalchuk has made up quite a bit of ground on Jan Schmidt, although there were quite a few lapped cars between the two. Pyotr Lyovkin has moved his way up to third place, but he's going to slide. Something broke on that car. Uh, he went to downshift and the car stepped out from underneath him. The gearbox has failed on the 95 from third place, and that's going to take him out of the race. That is a tough break for that Russian Bears team as they've really been uh, quite strong, but mechanical gremlins keep seem to uh, keep seem to be biting them, uh, even in the Europe series. Ian Elias now, haven't talked about him all day. He is up in eighth place, uh, putting together one of the quietest runs I've ever seen. And uh, Elias, one of the uh, one of the normal full-time drivers managed to put his car into the race uh, kind of by the skin of his teeth and now he's looking for a top 10. This is a fantastic run for the 32 car who is up in championship contention as Derek Scheiter blows up from 16th place with just a few laps to go, just about 10 laps to go and uh, he's going to slow on track, pull out of the way of the leaders and uh, that's going to be the day done for Derek Scheiter who I hope we do see more of him uh, he is a pretty good driver as uh, Balish and Zerapin are doing battle and Balish is going to go into the wall and out of the race from ninth place. He was having such a good run too, Balish was. We don't really see him in the Europe races because he normally DNQs because uh, let's be honest, his family team is not the best equipped for this. And uh, here is Clara Kindle who's worked her way back up into the top 10 after passing that wreck. She is up in 10th place after making an unscheduled pit stop. So that pit stop didn't really hurt her as much as we thought it was going to. But Clara Kindall really looking to minimize uh, any losses here in the championship as the lead has uh, stabilized at about 8 seconds between uh, Jan Schmidt and Isaac Kovalchuk. And uh, looks like there's no lapped cars anywhere around Schmidt. So unless something happens mechanically with this car, I think he's got this race just about locked up. I'm not seeing any lapped cars around for about 10 seconds. Uh, JP Beaufort is an absolute survivor in this race. He started 37th and has worked his way up to 11th place. He is a lap down and uh, that can be chalked up to him getting stuck behind slow lapped cars. But JP Beaufort, this is just an exceptional run from the 11 car. 
who honestly I didn't think was going to be in this race. He is lucky to be in here. He was seventh in the championship come in the Europe Championship coming into this race, and we've got some smoke uh, and dust kicked up there, but uh, didn't see any uh, tire smoke. As Barbara Burt is uh, battling here with a few lapped cars, uh, just trying to hold her own and make it to the end of this race. But Ben Atkins is going to get into her and take both cars hard into the wall. Sigurdsson makes an evasive maneuver to get around, but. Burt and Atkins are going to go out of the race. That is so disappointing for Atkins, who had moved up to third place. Going on board with him to see what he saw. As it looks like uh, Burt just slid a bit wide. He tried to make a move on the outside, and that just wasn't going to work in a million years. Unfortunate for Ben Atkins and Barbara Burt. Both, car both drivers would be fine. Donnie Olsen now getting ready to be lapsed by Sigurdsson, and Sigurdsson gives him a shot. I don't think that Olsen's going to be too thrilled about that at all as uh, Olsen has been a very gracious backmarker, and I don't think he's taking too kindly to that. Yeah, he's he's throwing blocks all over the place on Sigurdsson. He is not thrilled about that maneuver, as uh, Sigurdsson, who is in third place, uh, I think he's getting a bit impatient here as he's going to pull alongside Olsen, finally going to make that pass on him. Olsen's going to slide across the track, though. Oh, he doors him. He gets into the quarter panel. He's going to take him into the wall, and he's going to go flipping down the track and into the catch fence. That is a huge incident from Sigurdsson and Olsen. What was he doing? Olsen pulls across the track, gets into the quarter panel there. That was completely unnecessary by the 45 car. That was ridiculous, and the officials are going to call him to the hauler after that. Now, the beneficiary of that... Uh, little incident is Anders Magnussen who has moved up to third place here and uh, that's Ingrid Hedeland right behind in fourth and Lena Chernov in fifth. Now Anders Magnussen uh, has made sporadic starts in the Cup Series here and there. He made his first start at Karyala in 2012. Did a decent job but has been poking around the series. He has not finished uh, better than I think about 10th place or so in that one uh, round of the Czech Republic that we had that had a reduced field count. But this is easily going to be his best finish in either the Europe or the Cup Series. Bar none. Uh, here is Jan Schmidt, who is still back up front. Uh, he is lead is still about 8 seconds, and it looks like uh, he's going to close it out here in just a couple laps, unless something fails on that car. Andres Baumgartner, still running, having an excellent run up here. Uh, he's running in 13th place. That car right behind him, Joe Craig, that is for position. But he has the pace and has held him off so far. Uh, Hungarian companies jumped on board this to support their local boy. And uh, he is just doing a fantastic job here today. Uh, never really expected to see him have this pace after how dreadfully slow he was in 2012 and 2014. But it looks like he's not so bad after all once he gets actual quality equipment. Coming to the white flag, we've got some fuel issues as uh, Ian Elias is going to bring his car into the pits. And so is Ingrid Hadeland, which is a tough break for both drivers. They are both looking at top five finishes. Uh, but unfortunately, it was not meant to be as uh, they're going to bring their cars into the pits. But for Jan Schmidt, the Cinderella season continues as he comes through the final two turns and he will take his first career PCC Cup Series win in the 2016 Round of Russia. Looking at the results, Kovalchuk manages to finish in second place, uh, eight seconds back from the leader, Anders Magnussen in P3, best run of his career, Leonid Chernov, P4, Lev Zarepin brings it home in fifth place for Russian Bears, Clara Kindal, P6, excellent recovery from an unscheduled pit stop. Ingrid Hadeland, after that uh, final pit stop on the last lap, Brings it home in 7th place. First car one lap down. Uh, JP Beaufort, P8. Great recovery from not even expecting to make the race. Ian Elias, P9 after that pit stop. Mark Burt brings it home in P10. One lap down. Lev Tabakov, P11. Fantastic run for the SMP Katsev team. Stuart Buchanan, P12. Quiet all race, but managed to sneak in and get a good result. Andres Baumgartner, P13. What an excellent run. For that four team joe craig brings it home in 14th after getting in some incidents early on but keeping his nose clean giles treadway uh caused some incidents early on but brought home p15 and les jackson was the final car running four laps down in p16 johan sigurdsson 
P17, Ben Atkins, P18, Donnie Olson, and Barbara Burt rounded out the top 20, but none of them brought their cars home to the finish. And now we look at the PCC Europe results, which factors in only the drivers that declared for PCC Europe points at the start of the season or had shown up to PCC Europe races prior to this one. Uh, top 10 we had seen in the top 20 of the normal results, but Mahali Balish, P11, Peter Leovkin, P12, Derek Scheiter, P13, Clay Gibson, 14th, Marcel Bakelli, P15, uh, Grigory Novakovsky, Alexa Lake, Katyn Skrill, David Hetzel, and Christopher Loxanen round out the top 20 finishers for the PCC Europe Series, which uses a different point system than the Cup Series. And now taking a look at the PCC Cup Series points, Ike Durbin manages to pull a bit of ground on James Hewitt, who only managed to make uh, minimal points here. Ian Elias is up to third place, uh, vaulting from ninth place uh, before Ben Atkins goes from sixth to fourth. Mark Burt jumps from tenth to fifth as Tom Delgado falls down to sixth. Gaspar D'Souza drops from fifth to seventh despite starting this race. Louis Ballard from seventh to eighth. Brian Gallagher drops from fourth to ninth after missing this race. Barbara Burt uh, moves up from 15th to 10th in the standings. Uh, Nicholas Cordovos failed to qualify for this race and dropped from 8th to 11th. Sapphire Anderson from 14th to 12th. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer DNQ'd and dropped two positions in the standings. Uh, Duncan Cobb dropped two positions as well. Andy Lambert dropped two positions. And uh, Josh Marshall stays steady in the points. Kelly Blackwater only moves up one position. Akio Gifu did not uh, make this race and dropped one position. Daniel Sharp did not qualify and neither did John Jefferson, but they remain in the same positions that they were before this race. Now taking a look at the PCC Europe standings, Clara Kindall holds a 20 point lead over Jan Schmidt, who gained 30 points on Kindall in his Cinderella season as it continues. Christopher Loxanen is third in the standings after gaining only one point. Isaac Kovalchuk closed that gap to within 10 points of Loxanen. Novakovsky is 5th, and Chernov is 6th, although Chernov does not look to be much of a championship threat at this point. JP Beaufort is in 7th place. He gained quite a bit of ground on some of the cars in front of him. Zerapin is 8th, doing a great job this season with minimal funding. Ingrid Jane Ambleton is the first car that didn't qualify. She is in 9th in the standings, and Clay Gibson, after running a partial schedule, is up to 10th place, passing Giampaolo Fini, who did not qualify for this race, but sits 11th in the standings. Katya and Skrull did not gain many points. She only gained four points this race, but sits in 12th place. Keegan Mallory did not qualify. He is 13th. Leofkin did not move in the standings, but gained quite a few points here today. Uh, Buchanan, same with him. He jumps up from uh, way down in the standings. He was 18th coming in this race, up to 15th. Tora Grossa did not qualify for this race. He is 16th. Hetzel jumps up in the points a bit. Uh, he is at 99. Anna Kostopoulos and uh, Philip Benoit Hogan did not qualify for this race. They sit 18th and 19th. And Anders Magnussen jumps from 31st in the standings all the way up to 20th. And finally, looking at the team standings, nothing has really changed except that Double B Motorsports jumped over Griffith Motorsports, who got blanked in this race as none of their cars qualified.